I hate my name. Eugene Marstrom. It's the second worst name ever given to a male child. The first worst is Haskell Fleischman. How am I ever gonna play for the Yankees with a name like Eugene Morris Jerome? Listen, I know what it's like, Nora, not to be heard. You do? I grew up in a family of four children. My father, before he died, never could remember our names. My oldest brother was the big one, I was the little one. My brother Saul was the rotten one, Eddie was the skinny one. Who am I? The pretty one. What's the problem? I don't know, it doesn't seem very important anymore. I've never seen you cry over something that wasn't important. Listen, I'm not, I know I'm not your father. It's not my place to make decisions for you, but I can offer advice. Advice is free. If it doesn't fit, you can always return it. Can we walk down the block? Uh, sure, we'll take a look at the ocean. My father always used to say, throw all your problems out to the sea, and the answers will wash back up on the shore. Did they? Not in Brighton Beach. Orange peels and watermelon pits washed up. That's why it's good to take someone who knows how to give but advice. mostly I remember his pockets. His pockets? When I was six or seven, he always brought me home a little surprise. Like a Hershey or a top. He'd tell me to go get in his coat pocket, so I'd run to the closet and put my hand in, and it felt as big as a tent. I wanted to crawl in there and go to sleep. And there were all these terrific things in there, like juicy fruit gum and spearmint lifesavers and bits of cellophane and crumpled pieces of tobacco and movie stubs and nickels and pennies and paper clips and rubber bands and his gray suede gloves that he wore in the wintertime. With the stitched lines down the fingers, I remember. Then I found his coat in Mom's closet and I put my hand in the pocket and everything was gone. It was emptied and dry cleaned and it felt cold. And that's when I knew Hey, wait a minute. Don't get the wrong idea. If you were home last night when your mother told me, I would have thrown you and your clothes out the window. Today, I'm calmer. Today, I read the newspaper. Today, I'm afraid for all of us. I can't believe it. You mean it's all right for you to leave us, but it wasn't all right for me to leave you? I was never concerned with your leaving me. It was your future I was worrying about. It was my future. Why couldn't I have something to say about it? Maybe I was wrong. I don't know. I never made decisions for the family. Your father did. Everyone always took care of me. My mother, my sisters, your father, even you and Lori. I've been a very dependent woman all of my life. Maybe that's all I'm asking, to be independent. You earn your independence. You don't take it at the expense of others. Do you think that job? Would have even been offered to you if someone hadn't paid for those dancing lessons, kept a roof over your head, and clothes on your back? If someone is going to pay Uncle Jack back, it'll be me. Doing God knows what, I don't know. But one thing I am sure of, I will see it before I let my daughter show that man one ounce of ingratitude or disrespect. I guess there comes a time in everyone's life when you say, this very moment is the end of my childhood. When Stanley closed the door, I knew that moment had come to me. I was scared, I was lonely, and I hated my mother and father for making them so unhappy. Even if they were right, I still hated them. 